Uh, Spencer Dinwiddie will there be joining us so that Chandler, to his face, can tell him he has no shot in the next round. I think, <laughs> I think that'll hate. be a fun interview. Yeah, he yeah. to see it. <laughs> when a running back returns. Oh, yes, our guest today is starting point guard for your Brooklyn Nets, playoff bound Brooklyn Nets. Spencer Dinwiddie is joining us today. And but before we get started, I know you just turned 30. Ah, oh, memories. Happy birthday. Hey, happy birthday. Did you celebrate thank or you, are you a birthday person? It. Like, how does that work? Uh, not really. Um, <laughs> you don't do birthdays. Another day, Punching to be honest. Playoff first. Yeah, yes, fair. That's, that's, how we're, that's how we're gonna do it. Okay, look, I, Chandler, I'm throwing you under the bus because you did it to yourself. But <sighs> you guys are playing the Sixers in the first round. Chandler started the day already today with the smack talk, said you don't have a shot. So I'm gonna go right mm -hmm. to that. Do, how do you match up against this Philly team, Chandler? Um, I mean, nah, that, that's understandable, and, and, and you hate to see it from a good friend. Like <laughs> that, but, you hate to see it. But, uh, you just hate to see <laughs> you know, it. I mean, and B is the likely MVP, um, so obviously we're going to have to give it everything we got in terms of stopping him. But to be honest, I mean, out of the, the major seeds, we probably match up with them the best if uh, we can limit him, not foul him. Um, we feel like uh, defensively there, there's ways we can attack them as well. Um, Mikel's playing at a high level. We know they don't necessarily get back in transition. Um, we want to play fast. We're young. Uh, we understand we have no expectations, and we, we like our chances, to be honest. Spence, you've had an interesting year. The first half of the year, you're playing alongside Luka Doncic. You're, you're, you're one of the leaders in three-point field goals from the corner. Um, and then the second half, you play more isolation basketball. You're one of the league leaders in isolation points, uh, points per possession. You're up there among the elite players. What was the adjustment like for you mentally, uh, emotionally, physically, to go from playing alongside Luka and starring next to him versus being the lead guard again? Um, emotionally, I'll say it was probably a little bit easier just because I was coming back to a familiar place. Um, so, you know, thank God for Brooklyn. Um, I've always said like, uh, Dallas and Brooklyn have been the two spots that I've had a ton of fun in, in my career. Um, as far as adjusting my game, I think that's kind of been a hallmark of my career. You know, wherever I've gone, I've tried to do whatever was asked of me to, uh, help the team win. You know, I mean, right now, I'm, I think I'm passing the ball at a pretty high clip, um, which is what this team needs. Um, you know, I've been six man gunner i've been you know lead a bad team to the playoffs uh you know coast co-star or not co-star but be second under a superstar and catch you threes it's uh to me it's always been about winning and, and trying to understand just what the team needs at that point in time so you know that's that's the reason for the adjustment yeah, Spence, uh, sorry about my colleague, Michelle. She likes to gas things up oh, I did quite that. a bit. Uh, you hate to see that. But the Nets, you guys have been gelling uh, a lot and, and very quickly. I only have planned a few months together. How did that develop and how did you guys do that so quickly? I think it has to do with just being really high quality guys who've experienced winning a little bit. Um, you know, the twins have gone to the finals, uh, me and Dobe in the Western Conference finals. Um, you know, Nick and and, and Joe are, are super high character guys and and just everybody around, right? So, you know, we, we, we've all tried to come together, understand that we have a kind of a daunting task that we haven't been together very long, but you know, we, we, we believe in each other. Yeah, look, look you, you, you mentioned the Twins. You mentioned my Cal Bridges here as teammate now. I, I, I remember you guys getting into it a little bit. Does that <laughs> stuff carry over? How do, you, how do you address that when you get the young fella in your locker room with you a, after all these years? Um, it's actually funny because we definitely had a little smoke in uh, Phoenix. Uh, we actually <laughs> had some dancing during the game, too. Um, but, you know, that's water under the bridge. I think um, everybody's been surprised with a, exactly how high level he's been. Um, you know, we all knew he was probably a 20 point a game scorer, but, you know, to be in that 26, 27 range um, takes us from, you know, just being a decent team to, you know, a pretty good team. And um, I think we're going to need every bit of that in the playoffs. And I think he's ready for it. Spence, you had an exit from Brooklyn sign and trade uh, when you get when you went to Washington, three year, 60 million dollar deal. Um, now you're back in Brooklyn. Uh, how, yeah. how do you feel as a player? Do you feel more mature? Do you feel like obviously you're a much better player than you were when you left? Yeah. So you're, you're maturing that, in that way. But leadership-wise, what has been your focus? Oh, man. I mean, I think um, I learned a lot in, in the stops in D.C. And, um, and, and Dallas as well. Um, you know, when I was in Brooklyn the last time, you know, I was 
first under kind of D'Lo and then obviously under KD and Kyrie. So it wasn't uh, really my team, so to speak. Um, like I said, I learned a lot in the other two stops and then coming back, um, I knew that in a short term, uh, short time span, we were going to have to kind of pull the guys together. And so I think just having a little bit of elder statesman knowledge along with uh, Joe Harris as well, um, just just doing whatever I can to learn the guys and, and try to bring people together. Um, you know, but again, it's a, it's a credit to the high character guys that we have, right? And and that have experienced winning and, and are jumping on board and, and really just following the lead of uh, our coach, Jacques Vaughn. So February 5th, you find out you're going back to Brooklyn, traded for Kyrie Irving. What was that like? How do you find out? And is there something upon your return to Brooklyn immediately that you're like, well, can't wait to do that? Maybe it's food. I hope it's food. Oh, fe February 5th? I, I I would say my sources probably told me like February third, but you know, I don't want to. I don't want to take a, you know I don't want to take Sam's job or nothing like that. Um, yeah, I mean I I would say the the most exciting part about coming back to Brooklyn was just like the holdovers. You know what I mean? Um, Jacques Vaughn, Sean Marks, um, Joe Harris, uh, Nick Claxton. You know guys that I've already obviously talked about um, um, so far on on this interview alone. And then uh, since we want to talk about food, uh, Julianas Pizza. Shout out them. Uh, when I have my cheat days, I like to either get a pizza from them or, or get a waffle from Clinton Street. Um, and then it's back to fruit and, you know, steak. Oh, I love it. Yeah. I need food wrecks always. Yeah. That. Spence, you got to be honest here. How do you feel about the Mavs not making the playoffs after <laughs> trading you? Know? Oh, I ain't going to lie. I mean, there's a, there's a certain <laughs> level of, uh, you know, happiness from the from the pettier sides of my psyche. <laughs> yes. um, you know, they're, they're my friends, though. So, you know, I, I didn't want to see it go down like that. Um, you know, on the on the other side, you know, Theo, Bullock, you know, Luca, all all those guys. I mean, Javel, they we went to war together. Um, they're they're a playoff caliber team. Obviously, they had their their mishaps and things that didn't allow them to see the postseason. Um, you know, but but overall, like, you know, I wanted them to do well. I, I but there there is that little piece that I ain't gonna lie. <laughs> I'm kinda a little bit happy. Yeah. I totally get that. And uh, last thing from me, how's it been with Ben Simmons? Is he around? Is he practicing? Is he working out? What's the status on him? Um, he hasn't been practicing. You know, I, I know his rehab is, uh, you know, up to him and what he's doing right now. He's got to do his best for his body. I think um, we all know the type of explosive and, and dominant uh, player he can be on on both ends of the floor when, when he's healthy and when he's right. And I think for the, the best thing for his career is to get right. Um, you know, not not sacrifice too much for, you know, a, a playoff run. But he's around the guys. He's, he's being a great teammate. You know, you see a lot of things in the media, whatever, that, you know, he's not necessarily the, the highest character guy or something like that. And, and so far, that's been uh, further from the truth. He's been in the locker room every day. He's been, uh, you know, championing the guys on. Um, I've never personally dealt with a back injury. And so it's not really something I can comment on uh, to the older guys that I know that, that have. Um, they talk about, like, it's one of the worst things in the world, you know. So it, I, I think... In, in some respects, I, I have a lot of uh, sympathy for that. Um, and like I said, it's, it's, it's a topic that I don't know well. Um, well, here, here's a topic that you know well. Here's a Twitter from earlier this year. You and Kyle Kuzma had a little back. Actually, it wasn't even a back and forth. He sort of came at you, and you said they're not trying to play winning basketball. He responds on Twitter. The funny thing is they don't play winning basketball. <laughs> but you didn't do anything else on Twitter. Do you have a response now that it's been some time? <laughs> oh, man. Didn't I just say I was petty? Yeah, I know. <laughs> yes, please. <laughs> so here's the thing, right? And obviously I spent some time in uh, D.C. with uh, with Kuz. Um, what's what's that thing Draymond just said where he said uh, <laughs> insecurity is loud? Yeah. Right? <laughs> um, so basically here's what happened, right? Um, we lost to them. I was on the Mavericks. And obviously uh, we have a MVP caliber guy and, and we're trying to be a uh, championship caliber team. Just went to the West Conference Finals. Et cetera, et cetera. So I make a statement about, you know, we need to be better, um, understanding the the culture and how games are kind of played in D.C. and saying, you know, that's an unacceptable loss in that fashion. You know, he decides to respond because I guess he felt like it was a shot at him. <laughs> um, and I wanted to respond. You know, my, my agent told me to stand down that we had, you know, bigger fish to fry, things to do, um, get to the playoffs, et cetera, et cetera. But, you know, now I'm not in that environment. Um, I'm in the playoffs. He's not. And, you know, to address, <laughs> um, no, I'm just saying to, to address the socialite, right? Like there's a lot of guys in the NBA that really pour their heart and soul into basketball, um, are willing to do whatever it takes to win. There are a lot of guys that have different things that drive them and motivate them. I think if we look at, you know, him and the way he approaches um, life, fame, all that stuff that we could see that, you know, his priorities tend to vary. 
right? Like, that's why he dressed the way he does. He, you know, approaches basketball the way he does, the comments he makes. Um, and like I said with the Draymond quote, insecurity is loud. Like, you, you know that you're there, you know, shooting shots to try to get a contract. You're probably not uh, even a third star really on a good team because if you were, the Lakers would have kept you, right? Part of the reason you left was to try to make more money. Like, these are all things that are, are facts. And so at the end of my career, one thing that I want to be known besides a guy that did whatever it took to win in whatever spot he was at is a guy that was also very honest. And so, like, my complete response to, you know, coups and all that other stuff to address it directly, I mean, I played with a guy. You know what I mean? We, we know what the priorities were. And, you know, a lot of times people thought I was talking about Brad or whatever, anything like that. I, I look at Brad in the same light as, like, a dame. I think he's loyal to D.C. I think, you know, probably on a championship team, he's probably got to be paired with, like, a Giannis. He's probably 1B. Um, which is no shot. I know on a championship team, you know, I'm probably the, the third guy, kind of like a Drew Holiday with a Chris Middleton and, you know, Giannis or whatever. Um, I'm very secure with who I am in my career. Um, I know on a really good team, I can be a number two, kind of like we are right here with the Brooklyn Nets. We got Mikael, we got me, we're still a playoff team. We're able to keep the ship right. Um, but in D.C., if you got three max dudes, Porzingis, Brad, and Kuz, like how you miss the playoff? Like it doesn't, none of these things make sense. You know what I'm saying? Unless your priorities aren't in order. And so I would say that's my probably full monologue to that. Um, <laughs> I hope you guys got everything you oh, need. Oh, yeah. yeah no. can, can we We're say recording. thank you? Thank you. No, you want to come? <laughs> yeah, you want to come to LA? Like, cut out for a second. Here, 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 here. We, we say that again. My feelings are hurt. Hey, I feel like thing, look, like I said, I want to be known as an honest man when it's all said and done. <laughs> well said. Um, well said, Spencer. And so, you know, if you're going to come at me, and, and especially because I took the clown emoji personally. I ain't going to lie. That's fair. That part really, it, 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 it bothered me because he knows who he is and he knows who I am. You know what I'm saying everybody around the league knows who I am. Look, Spence, we were hoping we were gonna get some uh, bulletin board material, but <laughs> it was about this other topic. Uh, but you already gave your answer. Your, your MVP <laughs> is Joel Embiid. Can you tell us why? What do you think of the other candidates? You know, this is the the biggest convo going, and, and I guess you're gonna be a little more polite. You're about to play this guy. Mm. You, you said you you gave us all your uh, your hot takes already, so I appreciate that. <laughs> Nah, I mean, like I said, I, I view myself as honest. I, I'm not here to be uh, polite. You know, obviously, I hope I can dunk on him again, right? Like, <laughs> right. <laughs> but because y'all playing the highlight. But but in general, though, I think um, it looks to be a three-horse race. I think you look at Jokic and Bede and Giannis. I personally think Giannis is probably the best player in the league. I think he gets a lot of flack because he's like skinny Shaq, but people want to see him like play like KD with like a jumper and stuff. But like if we really appreciate the fact he's skinny Shaq, then it's like, where he's dominant as hell. Um, but just looking at the year in beats had, um, I think it's his second scoring title. Um, his ability to draw a foul, it's like 12 free throws a game, 33 points. He scores in a variety of ways. He's just an ultimate force. I mean, right now we're basically watching his highlight tapes to prepare for, you know, playing. So, <laughs> yeah, and, and, and we understand it's a daunting task. I, and, and obviously Jokic just went back to back and, you know, we understand media narratives and maybe they don't want to give him three times in a row. It's, all that stuff plays a factor. And so I would just say, like, if I was a betting man, I'd choose Embiid. Um, I think he's up there with the best players in the league. I think Giannis is probably the best. But, you know, that's just kind of how I view the whole race. Spencer, uh, this has been an absolute... I gotta oh, add, got, I'm sorry. i got to add one thing. Spencer, you've been in the playoffs, obviously, Western Conference Finals. How many of the last years? Four, four five? How, how many yeah, I've been in playoff, playoff years for you? Playoff years? I mean, if you count the one I was hurt, um, then, yeah, four, five, four. That's what's up. What? Yeah. What was that what? your Chris Farley interview oh, moment? What was no, that? No, no, no. I, just, I, I <laughs> just wanted to add that context to the conversation. Yeah, that's that's right. that's we right. had the deal here with the Sixers. Then I took them to the playoffs when the bubble stopped everything. Oh. Then, uh, you know, we got the hurt year and then West Conference Finals. And now we play the Sixers again. And then it begins. By the way, context is important, Michelle. Context yeah. is very, very important. important. Honesty very is very important. important. And blowing people up is one of my favorite things of all time. Spencer, <laughs> best of luck in the first round of playoffs. This has been a pleasure. And uh, and we'll be watching. Chandler League Warner. assist leader in the second half of the NBA <laughs> season. Oh, yeah. That too. Assist leader. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Perfect. Uh, yes, this, that was awesome. And I enjoyed it. I'm watching your faces, by the way. It was fantastic. Thank you, Spencer. Yeah, th thank, thank you. We'll Spencer. process all that in this break, and we come back. We'll preview because we got more playing games tonight. Also, I'll probably mention that again. That was something. A soliloquy, if you will. Run it up, run it back. Run it up, run it back.